believe God can lower every mountain and bring up every valley to make sure. Pastor John F. Hanna is a husband, pastor, speaker, and author who has impacted thousands of lives through his ministry, prayer, and dedication to service. The foundation for his pastoral passion is rooted in his love for urban youth and teaching others how to grow their relationship with God through prayer. Pastor John F. Hanna is the founder a lead pastor of New Life Covenant Church, a non-denominational, multicultural church on the south side of Chicago. Presently, the church has grown to more than 20,000 members, including online membership. Pastor John F. Hanna lives in Chicago, Illinois, with his wife of 26 years, Anna Hanna, who also serves alongside him. You just waiting on the right timing, and you go. The curse is broken. Everybody that knows that you're not where you grew up in, you're not what you grew up around, but you're going to be different. Can you do me a favor? On the count of three, I want you to give God a praise that he broke the cycle when it came to you. One, two, three, go! Broken! 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 Shaky. Have your way tonight. Come on. I put a demand on your vocal cords. I put a demand on your vocal cords to speak with authority and power. Let revelation be revealed in this room. Let breakthrough come in this room. Let tonight be a turning point. And it is so. In Jesus' name. So my assignment tonight is to explain your process. My assignment is to give you revelation on why you've been through what you've been through, why you're going through what you're going through, and also give you revelation on where you're going. <laughs> and as Pastor Sam was saying, everyone is given a measure of grace. And hear me clearly. You have been graced to go through your process. God has given you everything you need to get to your next. Someone else would have been given up. Someone else would have been died. Someone else would have committed suicide. But you, you've been graced. You have the supernatural favor of God on your life to go through your process. Come on here. Let's talk. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And we're going to go between three verses, just 1 Samuel. And I want to speak to you about the man, Samuel. If you take notes, I want you to write this down. For many of us, you are not the norm. You're not the norm. You are a curse breaker. You are a history maker. You will be the first to do it in your village, in your community, and in your family. You are number one. Your children will never go through what you've been through. You ready? So if you study the scripture, have a seat. If you study the scripture, Samuel is the only one in the Old Testament that, throw, that hold three positions. If you want to write these three down, three titles. He is number one, he is a prophet. He is a prophet. Commentary says that he is the first prophet after Moses. After Moses, God raises up a man to be his mouthpiece. Number two, he is a judge. He is a judge. What does that mean? People come to him for major decisions. Let that explain why some people are drawn to you to seek your advice, to seek your counsel. Because God has given you the grace to advise others even while you're going through your trauma. Come on. So number one, we know that he's a prophet. Number two, we know that he's a judge. Number three, we understand that he is a priest. Mm. which means that he is assigned to go to God on behalf of other people, which means that he is an intercessor. 
Let's talk. If you study the scripture, watch this. Samuel is actually the last judge, the last judge in the Old Testament. But he has been given the oil to anoint the next. The next area will be the reign of kings. He is the first person to anoint kings. He anoints the first king, which is Saul. He anoints the second king, which is David. Please watch this. He could have been a selfish individual and poured the oil on himself. But what he did was God told him, no, you're not anointed to be that. But you anointed to anoint the next. Come on here. Anointed people are not embarrassed or ashamed or intimidated by necks. As a matter of fact, we understand that you being connected to me causes you to get to your necks. Come on, let's go. So in the Old Testament, he is the only one to sit in a seat in three areas. He is a prophet, he is a priest, and he is a judge. Now let's get some revelation on that. Many of you all, no one will ever be able to lock you down one lane because God has given you areas that you can multitask in different areas. This is why people can't lock you in an office. This is why people can't lock a title on you. This is why people can't lock a position on you. Why? Because you are graced and anointed to flow in different areas. Come on, y'all. I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your future. You're going to be married. You're going to have a business. You're going to have a ministry. You're going to have houses. You're going to live in multiple places. You're going to be anointed to do different things. And guess what? And it's going to be for the rest of your life. Okay, I got to calm down. <laughs> Come on, touch your neighbor and say, you're anointed for this. Come on, tell them again, you're anointed for this. Now, in order for you to understand your process, you have to go back in your background. If you study the scripture, the Bible says, number one, he is marked. What do you mean by marked? In other words, before he's even born, God has already marked him. If you study the scripture Bible, the Bible says his mother's name was Hannah. Please listen to this. The Bible says, and the Lord closed her womb. In other words, there was nothing wrong with her body. But God stopped some things from flowing. Let that be revelation of many of you all that struggle with insecurities. There's nothing wrong with you. You have everything that you're supposed to have in you. God just has not allowed it to come forth yet. The only way that it came forth was through prayer. Let's talk Bible. The Bible says that every year she would go with her husband to the temple to pray. Watch me. And she had a rival. Her rival was a woman that had kids. Isn't it amazing how people who have what you want hate on you? Isn't it amazing that people who even make more than you are intimidated by you? What are they intimidated by? Please listen. They're not intimidated by your presence. It is your future that rock the world. When you, before you even get in the room, angels go and announce your future is on the way. Okay. Come on, let's go Bible. Have a seat. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So the Bible lets us know that the Lord had closed her womb. In prayer, she begins to pray before she is even pregnant. She prays a prayer that marks her child. If you go to 1 Samuel 1 and 11, the Bible says, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, here's the line, and not forget your servant, here's the line, and give her a son. If you give me this son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. So before she's even pregnant, she's telling God, before you give it to me, he belongs to you. So before he is even conceived, God has already predestined his future. I came to tell some of you all, your future has already been marked. You just have to go through the process. Come on here. You got to hear me clearly. So watch me. Before she is even 
pregnant, she has already promised God that he belongs to her. If you search scriptures, there are different ones that God marked before they were even born. Let's talk Bible. Samson, before his mother and father even conceived him, he was marked. Isaac, before he was even born, he was marked. Jeremiah, look what he says to Jeremiah. Look at the screen in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before, 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 before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I need to stop right there. He knows everything about you. He knows your shortcomings. He knows your faults. He knows your weaknesses, but he still loves you. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on here. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Here it is. Before, 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 before you were born, I did what? I set you apart. Which means that when you hit the earth, you're not going to be like everybody else. When you hit the earth, you'll look different. You'll sound different. You'll walk different. You'll act different even when you in church you might not fit in with some church people why because i've already set you apart and some of y'all i came to tell you i need you to stop trying to fit into the circle because you'll never fit in i need you to begin to celebrate your originality nobody look like you nobody talk like you nobody rock it like you nobody act like you nobody praise god like Come on, do me a favor, test two people and say, you've been marked for greatness. You've been marked for greatness. He says, uh, he says, I knew you, I set you apart. Here's the line, here's the line. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. I've already declared your seat. Hmm. I've already determined your occupation. Hmm. Hmm. I already know where you're going to live before you get your passport. I already know the name of your ministry before you even see it. You were marked. Let's talk. Let's talk. Lean in. So when I was, my mother and my grandmother made sure that I understood some history. My mother told me that she was at church on a Friday night and the power of God came in the room. And I was in her womb to the point that I start kicking. And my mother thought that she was having a miscarriage. My mother ran to my grandmother, who was a praying woman, and she says, I think I'm losing my baby. My grandmother turned around and looked at my mother and said, you have not lost anything. God just marked your child. I came to tell some of y'all, how do you know you've been marked based on the hell you've been through? Based on what you are going through? The enemy doing his best to stop you from being who God has called you to be. But those of you all that have gotten the revelation, I have been marked by God. Lift your hands, open your mouth and worship God. That you're different. That you're different. So he's marked. He's marked. He's marked. Touch your neighbor and say, you've been marked by God. Come on, say it again. You've been marked by God. You're not like everyone else. You've been marked by God. You're different. You're unique. You'll never fit in. I need you to go ahead and accept the fact that you've been marked by God. You ready? Have a seat. Let's go. So number one, you've been graced. Watch me. Watch me. Not only are you marked, he is birthed. Now, I need you to really get this revelation. He is birthed between Hannah and her husband. He's only birthed there. I'm only using this family to bring you forth. I'm going to say that again. I'm only using these two individuals to bring you forth. So don't look for anything else from them. You got to get this one. Ready? What do you mean? You ready? So the Bible says, watch me, when he's finally born, remember her vow. If you give me this man child, I'll give him back to you. Okay, so I'm going to use your body. I'm going to use your body to birth something on earth. I need to use your house as a birthing room only. I need to use your house as a birthing room only. But understand what I'm about to birth in your house will outgrow your house. So you can't hold it long. You can't hold it long because it's bigger than what you could have ever birthed. 
You ready? So I want you to get this. The Bible says that her husband, she tells her husband, I'm not going to go to the temple to worship today, but I'm going to stay home and finish weaning, doing what I can for this child. Let's bring this up. If you look at the screen, it says in, in, in 1 Samuel, what? In 1 Samuel 1 and 23, do what seems best for you. Her husband, Elekna, said to her, Stay here until you have weaned him, until you have done all you can. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at the home and nursed her son until he was weaned. What does that mean? I am only going to birth him but I'm not assigned to walk with him for the rest of his life. I will nurse him. I will take care of him. I will put food on the table. I will feed him for a certain season, but I'm not assigned to his future. Look at me. If you look at my history, and allow me to let you into my background. Um, in, in Chicago, they have something called the permanent underclass which means that if you are born in poverty more than likely you'll stay in poverty you are a reflection of your background they sent some reporters to a community a poor community and they wrote a book entitled the american milestone the grandmother got pregnant at 15 the mother got pregnant at 15 and now a daughter was pregnant at 15 so they say this is a cycle in this house so whatever comes through this house will be a reflection i came to tell some of you all you will not be the continual cycle i want to come off this stage so bad you will not be the the continual cycle as a matter of fact when it came to you the curse is broken Everybody that knows that you're not where you grew up in, you're not what you grew up around, but you're going to be different. Can you do me a favor? On the count of three, I want you to give God a praise that he broke the cycle when it came to you. One, two, three, go! Broken! 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 Shia! You'll live better. You'll drive better. You'll be more anointed. You'll walk in favor. Broken. All right. I got to give you revelation. Have a seat one minute because I got I to free some of you all up. I got to free some of you all up. So when, you, when, when, when God only uses some individuals to birth you, Watch me, you can't run to them expecting certain things. Because if you keep expecting certain things, it's going to leave you with a spirit of disappointment. In other words, watch me, watch me. You're only here to birth me. You're not here to raise me. You're only here to birth me. You can't see my future because you can't get past the four walls of this house. So I used to have daddy issues. Because my father, my father was a gangbanger and a drug dealer, and my father ended up in prison. When he got out, he began to make promises, listen carefully, that he couldn't keep. He would say, I'm going to be at your eighth grade graduation. He never showed up. He said, when I graduate from high school, he says, I'll be at your high school graduation. He never showed up. When I graduated from college, he said, I'll be there. He never showed up when i got married he said i'll be at the wedding he never so watch me the average person would have abandonment issues until you get the revelation god wouldn't let you show up because if you showed up you would have taken credit for what god did and what happened in my life you didn't do it god get the glory those of you that know that no person can take credit but God for your life, can you just lift your hands and say, to God be the glory. Say it again. To God. Say it again. Free your mother. Free your father. Free your family. 
They can only do what they can do. God's going to do the rest. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Free them. Free them. Free them. Free them. Free them up. Free them up. I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry at you. God only used you to release me on the earth. You were only the carrier. You were not the raiser. You ready? So watch me. So the house is used to birth. So number one, you're marked. Number two, you're birth. Then number three comes, you're planted. Cause so I marked you. I use this environment to um, birth you, but now I have to get you out of here because I need to plant you so that you can get what you need so that you can be who I've created you to be. For many of you all, I need you to hear me. Your steps have been ordered by God. Mm. Bible, ready? Bible. In 1 Samuel 1 and 25, after she weans the child, let's go. She goes to the temple with the boy. She brings him to the house of God. Please hear me clearly. For many of you all, you're not here because you just decided to be here. God planted you in the right atmosphere to make sure that he could get the best out of you. Oh. Ooh. Come on, let's go. Come on, open your and say, I was planted here. Come on here, let's talk, let's talk a bougie. Some of y'all even want to leave, but God won't let you leave quite yet. Some of y'all been trying to get out, but God won't let you get out quite yet. Until you get the revelation, there's some things that I'm doing for you here before I take you there. And I can't do what I want to do for you here if you don't accept the fact that I planted you. I'm the one that ordered your steps. I am your alpha and your omega. I am your beginning and your end. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. You told me, yes, I'm going to get the glory out of everything that you go through, but it's going to be a process to get you where you going come on i told you go talk to your neighbor to touch anybody say you've been planted here ready you've been planted here say it again you've been planted here so watch this the bible says she finally brings him to the temple in verse 25 when the when, when the bull had been sacrificed they brought the boy and turned him over to the last priest before him. I am now going to put you in the hands of a priest because you're going to be one. I am going to put you in the hands of someone who has oil because you're going to be anointed. I had to get you out of your house to get you in front of the people who could reflect who you shall become. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Watch me, watch me. Now, here's the, here's the bold line. So now I give him to the Lord. Well, how long are you going to let your baby stay there? For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. Here's the line we miss. Because watch me. When you realize that you were birthed in one place, Come on here. You were marked by God and now you planted. You cannot be here and be angry. You cannot feel as if you're missing out on something. You cannot feel as if you're doing God a favor. You cannot feel like you're better than anybody. You understand that you're here only because God called you here. Watch me. Here's, here's, the, here's the next line. Some of you all, you can't get to your next process until you do this part right here. And the Bible says, and he worshiped the Lord. Where? Right there in a new territory, in a new surrounding. And I came to let some of y'all know this week, your worship is about to be your release. If you 
don't mind, I need you to make sure you're next to another worshiper. How do I know you're a worshiper? Because worship is not silent. Worship is something that you can hear loud and clear. Worship is not something that you hold on the inside. Worship is something that you have to release. On the count of three, I need you to lift your hands and I need you to make sure you're around another person that's going to worship God, that you're in the right house, you're around the right people, you're going to hear the right word, you're going to be in the right revival this week, you're right where God has put you. Lift your hands on the count of three and open your mouth and worship. One, two, three, worship. Come on, I want to walk through your worship. 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 Open your mouth and worship God. Open your mouth and worship God. Open your mouth and worship God. Just a few more seconds. Just a few more seconds. His hand is on your life. His hand is on your life. You're graced for this. You're equipped for this. You have everything you need. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. Give me five more seconds. Five. Four. Three. Shake Rosoto. Basatada me another Bohaya. God got you. 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 God has your name. God has your resume. God has everything that concerning you. God got you. God got you. God got you. You've been marked. You've been birthed. Now you're planted. All things are going to work together for your good. Say, I know. Rosato Ramaziando. Glory. You've been marked. You've been birthed. You've been shifted. And now you're planted. You're in the right place at the right time. Keep a sound on your voice and have a seat. Keep a sound on your voice. Have a seat. Keep a sound on your voice and have a seat. Keep a sound on your voice and have a seat. Keep a sound on your voice and have a seat. Keep a sound. Accept that. Accept. I need you to. I need you to accept everything that I've said. I agree I've been marked. I agree that I was birthed here. I was birthed between two individuals, but I also accept the fact that you planted me. You planted me. And I'm not mad at my parents. I'm not mad at my family. I'm not mad at anybody. Because my steps are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. everyone just say, yes, Lord. What does that mean? I agree. Come on, say yes, Lord. Come on, say it again. Yes, Lord. Come on, say your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done. My life belongs to you. My life belongs to you. My life belongs to you. Come on, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So I'm going to need you to rest in being planted. I'm going to need you not to fight it. I'm going to need you not to, not to buck up against it. I'm going to need you not to be angry. I just need you to rest that I got you. And no weapon formed against you is going to be able to prosper. 
and I will perfect those things that concerneth you. Come on, lift one hand and just say, yes, Lord, yes. Come on, leave that hand up. Yes, Lord, yes. I'm in the right place. I'm around the right people. My steps have been ordered by God. He knows what is best for me. Ready? Now I need you to come on. If you have your Bibles, I need you to go to the third chapter. To the third chapter. And allow me just to, just, this is what we're going to just break it down just a little bit if you don't mind. Because I have to show you your now. I have to show you your now. You accept the fact that you've been marked. You accept the fact that God used your parents to birth you. You accept the fact that he planted you where you're supposed to be. So now, here's the thing. So what do you do while you're planted? What do you do while you are planted? Because some things are supposed to be growing. Some things are supposed to be expanding. So then we take it off of the parents, and now we only begin to look at him. And I need you to hear me. God says, now I want you to zone in on you. We're not going to look at your parents anymore. We're not going to look at your schooling anymore. We're not going to look at where you, were, where you grew up anymore. I want to talk about you at the top of 2023. Where are you going with my grace? What are you doing with what I've put in you? And I need you to pay close attention as we read in three positions that Samuel has. The Bible says in 3 and 1, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord. What does that mean? Eli had begun to teach him how to do certain things in the temple that a priest would have to do. Please pay attention. He did not do it for a paycheck. He did not do it for money. He did not do it for recognition. He did it for the Lord. He ministered before the Lord. Please hear me. Those that minister before the Lord, you must become comfortable with criticisms. Because those that are doing nothing always have something to say about what they would never do. Come on, let's go. <laughs> he ministered before the Lord. Watch me. Even when you come here, do you sing the song because we tell you to sing it? Or do you read the words and sing it unto the Lord? When we tell you to open your mouth and shout, do you shout because we told you to shout? Or do you shout unto the Lord? Even when you give an offering, do you give it so you can be seen? Do you give it so you could boast about what you gave? Or do you give it unto the Lord? Ah! In other words, while you're in here, I need you to minister before the Lord. Before the Lord. Before the Lord. Watch me. If you're going to be an armor bearer, you don't armor bear so somebody can see you. You don't armor bear, well, he didn't appreciate me. You wasn't doing it for an appreciation from man anyway. You were doing it unto the Lord. If you sing on the praise team, do you sing and wait on them to respond to your singing? Or do you close your eyes and if they never say a word, you give God all the glory. If you play an instrument, do you play so you can just sound good? Or do you play as if you're in the presence of the Lord giving God glory? When you lift your hands, are you lifting your hands because I tell you to lift them? Or when you lift your hands, do you see that you're literally in the presence of the Lord? Watch me, watch me. How do I know you before the Lord? Because he breaks your flesh down. How do I know you before the Lord? Because he'll make tears come to your eyes. How do I know you before the Lord? Because he'll make you drop to your knees. He'll make you lay on your face. He'll get you to the point that you don't care who's looking at you. You don't care who's talking about you. You have an I don't care attitude. Can I hear from the worshipers that are worshiping before the Lord? 
Open your mouths and release your sound before. Before the Lord, before the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord. Praise team. Just a little bit. Do you know that song? For your glory, Lord. I would do. Just play it, Danny. Play it. Hold on, y'all singing. Come on. How you want to see him? For your glory. Close your eyes and sing it unto the Lord. Just. Just. And what? I want to be. I want to be where. Got to be. Got to be where. Want to be. Want to be where. Got to be. Got to be where. One more time, we're going to sing it. For your glory. I will do anything just, just to see you, to be all you as my king. I want to be. Everyone lift your hands and worship before the Lord. Minister. Minister. Come here for one minute, Pastor Sam. Come here. Come here. Just stand right here. Okay, I want, I want to show you this. Everyone stand to your feet. I promise you we're almost done. I have 17 minutes. Can you bring the scripture back up? And he ministered before the Lord. I want to show you something. Just stand right there. And the boy ministered before the Lord. Here's the line. Under Eli. Stay right there. So which means that if I'm here, I am under your tutelage. If I am here, I am under your teaching. If I am here, I submit my gifts. I submit my talents. I submit my yes to you because I believe that you have a relationship with God that you won't steer me in the wrong direction and I am under you I am not your equal I am not your buddy I am not your friend I am under you and your voice can speak over my life your voice can give me clarity as a matter of fact when I want to see God I have the ability to look to you you give me a glimpse of who God is you got to get that there's a spirit of rebellion in the land that we don't want to be under anyone there's a spirit of rebellion in the land that we don't want to obey anyone I don't obey man I obey God find the Bible because even in scripture, when Jesus was off for 12, at the age of 12, when he went back home, the Bible said, and he submitted to Mary and Joseph. Who do you submit to? Under. Watch this. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Go to the next verse. Go to the next. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could not barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Come on. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, which means that there's enough light for all of us to see who we're supposed to come. Let's go. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. Uh-uh, go back. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was doing what? Lying down. First you were ministering before the Lord. Then you were under Eli. 
But now you're lying down in the temple of the Lord. Where? Where the ark. In other words, I want to be in the presence of God. He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I want to be under the glory of God. Hold on one minute, Pastor. Everybody say, Glory! Come on, one more time, throw your head back and shout, Glory! It is where the glory is, you'll hear your name called. It is where the glory is that you'll hear your next assignment. It is what you serve that God will direct you to your next. It is why you're under the right person that God can trust you with your future. Come on, throw your head back again and say, Glory! Pay attention. So one night, while he was lying under the glory where the Ark of the Covenant was, God called him. Samuel! Watch what Samuel does. He runs to Eli. <laughs> Did you call me? Why is he running to man but God is calling him? Because I'm used to hearing God through you. And that's why we cover your anointing. That's why we cover your call. Because so many voices are waiting to hear God come through you. He says, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. He went back and laid down. And he heard it again. Samuel! He jumped up. He ran. Eli, did you call me? I didn't call you. Okay, go back and lay down. Samuel! Go back. Why does he keep running back and forth? Because I'm not going to make a move without instructions from the man of God. I don't trust myself. I know what I'm connected to. I know what I'm up under. I know what I've been serving around. And I'm not going to bust a move without hearing what I'm supposed to do next. Because I'm not that familiar. I'm familiar with you. But you're going to have to teach me how to become familiar with God. So the Bible says, you ready? He went back to lay down. And the Bible says, here's the line. And, and Eli perceived that it's the Lord. Have you been watching his worship? Have you been watching his servitude? Have you been watching how he's been taking pictures? All for his glory. Have you been watching how they've been singing for his glory? Have you been watching how they've been playing for his glory? So when your next call you, they don't have a problem releasing you. Because I've seen your works. Many want to be released but don't have any works. You have no resume in the spirit. You have no background in the spirit. And the Bible says, he says, go back and lay down. He said, the next time you hear that voice, you're going to say, speak, Lord. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Because I submit to your call. Tell me how to get close to God. Tell me how I can be the man that God created me to be. Tell me how to hear God when I can't hear him for myself. And the Bible says, he said, go. And the next time you hear that voice, you say, speak, Lord. Lift your hands because in this four day revival, God's about to speak loud and clear. Some of y'all know that I'm talking to you. And you might need to get on the altar for a few minutes. 
you might need to step in the aisle for a few minutes and if you know that I'm talking to you I need you to get in position glory 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 you're about to be called you're about to be called He's about to call your name. He knows my name. He knows my name. You ready? I have one last revelation and I'm done. History is about to be made in Abuja. God's about to raise up some individuals. That's going to cause a rumble in the earth. And the rumble is not just for the house of God. Your rumble will be heard in the business arena. It will be heard in the politics. It will be heard in the classroom. It will be heard in the streets. Please, please pay attention to my last point. So Eli told go lay down and if he calls you say speak for your servant is listening so Samuel went back and he lay down to his place still being obedient come on let's go and the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times same God that called you back then is going to call you again Samuel Samuel, then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Everybody lift your hands. And for this revival, I need you to be clear. Say, speak, Lord. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Some of y'all need clarity. You need clarity. You need clarity. He's not the God of confusion. He will give you clarity. He will give you direction. He will tell you exactly what's about to happen. He will tell you what to do with your family. He will tell you what to do with your business. He will tell you what to do with your ministry. He will tell you how to handle things. He will tell you how to deal with your friends. Come on, lift your hands and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Now, here's the line, and I'm done. In verse 11, oh. the Lord said to Samuel, I want you to get this line. See, I'm about to do something in Abuja, I mean in Israel. I'm about to do something in Africa. <laughs> I'm about to do something in Africa that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle because no one expected it to come out of you. Thank you for marking me. Thank you for birthing me. Thank you for planning me. Thank you for calling me. Repeat after me. Thank you for marking me. Thank you for marking me. Come on, say thank you for birthing me. You knew where to put me, where I needed to be. Come on, say thank you for planting me. Every servant, everyone that's serving in any kind of ministry, lift your hands and say thank you for building me. 
Hirabashiki. Some of y'all are going to be tired this week. Good. I need you to rise above your tiredness and know that you're ministering unto the Lord. I need you to rise above a headache, a rise above criticism. Get over everything. You have to make it your business to be in the right place at the right time. Every servant of the Lord say, thank you for building me. Thank you for calling me. He knows my name. Thank you for watching. We hope you were blessed and richly transformed by this sermon. Join us on site and online in any of our centers globally as displayed on the screen. When we pray, there's a God who heals us. Yeah. When we pray, there's a God to answer. Yeah. When we pray, we prevail, we prosper. Follow us on all social media handles as shown on the screen. Also, don't forget to join Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev. Sam Oye, weekdays Monday to Friday by 5.50 a.m. West African Time. Join on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram at Rev. Sam Oye. Please invite your friends and family members, for with our God, all things are possible. For more inquiries, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org. We celebrate you. I'm intoxicated by the power in that name. That name is more powerful than neutron bomb, more powerful than chemotherapy. That name is more powerful than radiotherapy. I've seen the name work. This is the Transforming Church International. One church making global impact.